Hey everyone, it's Lisa, and today is Wednesday hump day, and I thought what I would do is start my video series on my eye surgery I had, which is the blepharoplasty, and um, I thought what I would do this first video is first explain to you um, my story with my eyes, and then I will start working on the questions and We'll do some more videos on it, and you can ask okay. more questions down below. My eyes. I have always had, it's just like a thing in my family, We've. I have had hooded eyes all my life. But the good kind of hooded eyes, kind of like Blake Lively, or, um, you know, just hood, good hooded, full eyes, not like loose skin or anything. And um, it never bothered me, and I think it's a beautiful look. I mean, it wouldn't bother me now if that's the way it was. But as you get older, what happens is you start losing, as you know, the fat in your face and gravity and everything else. And the my eyes weren't as hooded anymore with the fat. It's kind of like the fat had gone away, and I was just left with the skin. And so... This, what I, I'm going to put a picture, um, I'll put it right here. <laughs> you can see how this eye was much worse than this eye, which this eye is just shaped different than that eye, and that's just the way it is. I don't think anybody has two exact shaped eyes. And um, so what it did is it, I had skin, the skin that used to kind of go out like that, well, with no fat in it, it just kind of was folding, you know, up when I, you know, lifted my eyes or opened my eyes. This side was not quite as bad, but still was getting there. And so what I have done now for years it is just get Botox. And what that does is it lifts your brows and it was lifting that skin enough for me not to worry about it. But then in the last probably two years, it had gotten where either it wasn't enough or the person who did it didn't do it at the exact right spot or maybe anybody that gets Botox knows sometimes it takes better than other times and it was just a gamble and it just wasn't working like it should. And um, every time I was doing my makeup, I almost had to do really dark on the outer portion of my eyes so that you could not see the dimension or the, you know, you couldn't see that the skin was, you know, folding like that. And it just got, you know, my to do winged eyeliner, it was like I had to do it, you know, across all the folds. And then when I would let my eyes down, it would be just you know, going straight out or going down. It was just, you know, where I couldn't do my eye makeup. And, I mean, all that you can get over. But then it had gotten to the point where when I woke up, this eye, the um, hooded part, was almost like coming down to my eyelashes. And, you know, it was almost to the point, a lot of times insurance will, co will cover when this happens to older people because it just gets to the point where, you know, it's hard to, you feel like you can't open your eyes all the way. And I remember my granddaddy had it bad, but of course he wouldn't do anything about it. And um, so it is like a hereditary thing. And, you know, in a perfect world, what we could do is maybe put that fat back in and bring our eyes back to your youthful appearance. But you can't, I mean, besides the fact that you probably couldn't do that, but even if you did, after time, that skin has kind of stretched out. So what you're left with is the options of doing something about it or just dealing with it, which you know, either one is fine. And that's something I did want to say in these videos is I want to be clear that I'm not trying to talk you into anything and I'm not trying to talk you out of anything. I just really want to tell you my experience and then you can decide for yourself because I don't want to, I don't want to be held responsible for either, a, either decision because I think it's a very personal decision. And so, um, now, okay, so when I went to, let's back up a little bit to the whole reason I went to have a consultation at my plastic surgeon's office in the first place. And I, and I'll go into this more on my mastoplexy video. And I had gone, I, okay, 12 years ago, and I'll go into this more, but 12 years ago, I had breast implants. 
saline after I had children when I was left with nothing, nothing but a flap of skin. You could see my ribs through my boobs. And um, so I went and had breast implants and I'd had them for 12 years. And after 10 years, you're supposed to either have them replaced, which I don't really think you have to, but you're supposed to get like a checkup or whatever. And I had actually made an appointment and then something came up and I canceled it. And um, as time and gravity had, you know, taken place, um, they were, I mean, not that bad. Now when I look back at them and I look at other before and after videos, they weren't that bad, but I'll get into all that in the next video. Okay, so I went to do that. I went to a consultation for a mastoplexy, which is a reduction and a lift and an implant exchange. And like a, probably about, I don't know, a week before my appointment, I started thinking, you know, I'm going to ask him about my eyes. I'm going to ask him how complicated it would be if I had this done at the same time. Because I thought, well, if I'm already going to be down and out and I'm already going to be getting put under, why not go ahead and do both of them at the same time? So I mentioned it to John and he went to my consultation with me, which I do recommend that because it's, I think it's good for your husband to hear you talk to the doctor and explain your you know, your concerns, and I think it's good for him to hear the doctor, you know, explain to you, you know, how I asked him, it. and that day I had on, you know, my full winged liner with dark shadow, and he looked at my eyes, and he was like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, he said, know, it looks like that. you have mostly skin that to remove, not much, or not any fat, so I guess that's the two different, you know, things that they look for. And so, um, when I left, I got the price for the mastoplexy and the blepharoplasty all in one, and they gave you 10% off if you got both of them done at the same time. So, this is something I kind of hesitate to tell you, but I'm, I know I, everybody wants to know, but I want you to know that it's going to be different in every place, every doctor, and every person it is going to vary a little bit. But for my surgery, and I, I brought my, um, they give you a folder, you know, with all of your different things on there. My pre-op appointment, my surgery appointment. And um, I did go to Wilmington Plastic Surgery, and Dr. Charles Case is my surgeon that I go to. And he is the same one that did my surgery, you know, over 12 years ago. And the, re the way I picked him out was just word of mouth and, you know, from living here all my life, you know, you get to know who is the best at different things and or the best group at least. And he is, you know, there's I think four or five doctors in the group and um, the people, you know, as I got to know people that had had breast implants and different things done, you know, and you find out who did theirs, that's, you find out which doctor you're kind of geared more towards. And so, and I love his personality and I love his nurses, I love the office, everything. And, um, so my surgery all together, I thought I had my receipt in here, but I think I must have given it to John and he is the big, he keeps every, he literally, literally keeps every single receipt. I could go into some funny stories about him pulling up some receipts from about two years ago, but it's hilarious. But anyway, he keeps every receipt, so I gave it to him. And, but my surgery was 12,600 and some dollars. And to even make the, the consultation was free, but to make the appointment and the pre-op appointment, I had to pay, I think, $600 down. I paid $600 cash. And, um, and I did ask if there was a cash discount, but there wasn't. <laughs> I always ask that. But, um, cause you'll be surprised that uh, so many things you can get a discount if you pay cash, even hospital bills and stuff. So, um, we get to the pre-op appointment and matter of fact the picture that i put earlier that showed one eye worse than the other was the day that i went to my pre-op appointment and i on purpose didn't wear any eye makeup and um I had not gotten Botox in a long time. I just let it, I was due for it, like right around the time when I thought about doing the eye lift or the, it's not an eye lift, the blepharoplasty. Eye lift is something totally different. This is just the skin. It does not lift at all. And um, so I had kind of let that wear off and I was glad because I wanted him to see the true, 
you know, eyelid, just like it was as natural as it was going to be. And um, so he was really, both the nurse and he were kind of surprised at how much worse it was than they thought with, you know, because I had just gotten We had the consultation and I went ahead and, um, okay, I had the consultation, I had the pre-op, had made my appointment and, you know, they give you all the paperwork, they give you this big old pamphlet, they, um, you go ahead and sign everything, they go ahead and call in your prescriptions, you'll get a, um, let's see, an antibiotic, your pain medicine, antibiotic, pain medicine, and um, they want you to get a stool softener because anytime you take much pain medicine, you know, you can get kind of backed up and you do not want that to happen. I have never had that happen, but I have heard people say it is worse than the surgery going through that and they have to go to the hospital and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, during these videos, I might have to touch on some yucky subjects, but I want to tell you everything. And um, so this kind of goes through everything that you will, you know, let's see, things to know for your surgery, you know, drink plenty of water, nothing to eat or drink after midnight before your surgery, no ibuprofen, Advil, wear comfortable clothing the day of surgery, um, have prescriptions filled before surgery, bring your pain pills that day because all they can give you is the pain pill that goes, you know, in your IV and that was very important to me. So I'll go through more of that stuff maybe with the um, Mastoplexy. I want to answer some questions today. So here we go. I'm going to just, I had written down questions as you asked them and um, I wrote them down, <laughs> scribbled them down. Okay, questions. One eye was much worse than the other and that's just something I wanted to um, tell you about and I had people say that um, one of my eyes looked different than the other and that's because one of my eyes is different than the other. It's shaped different. One of my eyes, I think, I can't remember now, um, yeah, this eye is more open and round, and this eye, the one that had more of a hooded brow, is just more closed, and even this brow comes down further, and I would never, don't have them try to correct something, just have them do, you know, what they think is right, because you don't want to get into that. I didn't want to get into that. I just wanted to have what was wrong corrected. I didn't want to try to change my looks. I don't mind that one eye is not the shape of the other and I'm glad that it didn't change and I'll get into that a little bit further. Okay, um, okay, um, <laughs> and he told me this in my pre-op appointment. He noticed I was doing that a lot and then you could see all those wrinkles up there. He said, you know something that it's going to help? He said, and you don't even realize you're doing it. He said, I was constantly lifting my brow because you're constantly having to lift that skin to open your eyes. And for those of you that haven't had it done, you don't realize how much lighter it will feel and how much less you will do that until after it's done. It's amazing. Now I barely ever, I mean, I barely ever have to lift my brow. And before it was like I constantly talked with my brows up and that feels wonderful. It feels like a weight you know, has been lifted off of there. Okay, um, I wrote down, um, these. this must have been some things I wrote down just to tell you first. Um, I put, vision is improved, but eyes are sensitive. Um, for, just from the beginning, you know, after I went through the initial healing stage, and at the end of this video, I'm going to put a few pictures. I'll put the first picture when I came home, and I'll put a few pictures as I was healing at the end of this video. And um, they're gonna be, I'm gonna look terrible, but who cares? I mean, anytime somebody comes home from surgery, you're gonna look pretty terrible. And it's kind of gross, but I wanted you to be able to see it. And um, so right in the beginning, like the first, I don't notice it as much now. And I've heard that four weeks is a turning point and today is exactly four weeks. I had it done on Wednesday, February 10th. And so I've heard people say that four weeks is a turning point, turning point, and it really is for both. And but the first two weeks, especially that first week after, I noticed that I could open my eyes so much more, but I noticed my eyes were real sensitive to the light. And I don't know if that was just because of the stress, you know, going through the surgery, or if that was because more light was allowed in. And I have sensitive eyes anyway. I have, I think people with blue eyes and light eyes have a little bit more sensitivity. And Will and I, 
John and Brooke aren't as bad, but Will and I have real sensitive eyes. Okay, this is a major point I wanted to tell you. You cannot wear your contacts. Of course, you can't wear contacts to the surgery. So you cannot wear your contacts for, I think it was a week that I couldn't wear my contacts. And I didn't realize that, which is fine. I have glasses, but I was just thinking you may want to get some I do not have any prescription sunglasses. So the week after I had my surgery, I had to drive because I had to go get my kids. And all I did was go there and come back. I tried to take it easy. But as I told you before, that's the week that I think John got sick, um, Will was sick, and Bridget was sick. John and Will had a cold, but Bridget had a, you know, a stomach bug. And um, so I was having to drive a little bit more than I wanted to. But so I had my glasses on, but I didn't have any prescription sunglasses. So no lie, I was wearing my glasses, those black coach glasses with my Ray-Bans put over them. And you know, I've told you that I, it always makes me laugh when I see the older people with those great big sunglasses on, you know, with the sides and everything. If I'd have had those, I would have straight up just worn them with pride. I would have not even cared because my eyes were so sensitive, just watering, watering. And right after you've had that surgery done, you do not want to be pulling on your eyes. I mean, you want to, that you know, you have stitches and everything and you want to be real gentle with them. So make sure that you have some glasses that you like wearing and make sure that you have, you know, sunglasses or even get those ones that go over your glasses because I wear my contacts all the time, so I don't have any prescription sunglasses. Okay, you can't wear makeup on your eyes for two weeks. Um, and I think that, no, you can't wear any makeup, none. No um, cover-up, nothing on the incisions. And you can see a little bit of my scarring right there, right there, which is coming along great, and it's gonna get better and better, and I'll get into that in a little bit. So you can't wear makeup for two weeks. Um, okay, here comes your questions. I can tell by the way I wrote them. Uh, doctor errors, healing problems. Um, I think that person meant was I worried about doctor's errors or healing problems. Not really. And uh, my friend Tammy up his beads said that she thought I was so brave and she admired how I made the decision and everything. And I thought I said, really? And I guess I just, you know, I trust him and I'm a trusting person anyway. And I'm not a fearful person, really. Um, I'm not real paranoid. And I do trust doctors. And I guess I just, you know, I just, that is, this surgery is done so much. And like I've told you, so many men have it done. Um, it's not just a vanity thing. It's done a lot. So I wasn't really worried about that. And healing problems, I wasn't worried about that either because I don't have any issues that would keep me from healing. Um, instant difference, um, yes, there is an instant difference because they take away that skin and it is instantly, I mean, you can tell an instant difference. Now the swelling, you have to keep um, ice on your eyes for about, I think two to three days. And the, one of the freakiest things is when you wake up from your surgery, your eyes are wrapped up. So you wake up and not only are you kind of out of it, but your eyes are wrapped up so you can't see. And this is something that happened to me. It did, has not ever happened before. I've only had two surgeries. I had my initial breast implants and I had a, babies really put a number on me. I had a herniated belly button from pregnancies that it kind of ruptured and it made me have like an Audi belly button. And it wasn't just a vanity thing, it hurt. So I ended up having a, um, I don't even know what it's called, but a hernia type surgery on my belly button. And that's the only two times I've been put out. And both times I woke up and felt pretty good and came home and started taking my pain pills and, you know, kind of went on from there. Well, I don't know what happened this time, but all I can remember is waking up and just feeling, they said I had been um, heaving. I woke up just so nauseous and I had been um, trying to throw up without even knowing it and I had kind of ruptured this eye and it was bleeding again and this is the bad thing 
is they could not give me any of my pain pills until they could get some saltine crackers on my stomach and let me drink a little bit of Sprite or something. And I was so nauseous. I mean, and John says I was like yelling out stuff and I, I told him I need to call that nurse and apologize. He said I wasn't rude, but I was demanding because I was going, I need to throw up. And they were giving me that thing and I was trying to throw up. Because you know, in your head, you're thinking if I can just throw up, I'll feel so much better. And I, I don't think I ever did actually throw up, but I felt nauseous for so long. And they finally got some saltine crackers in me and my pain pill. And by that time, my chest felt like it took like I think I was there in recovery for an hour and a half or almost two hours and the bad thing was um, my mom you have to be um, at surgery which it's not the same office that's here close to me it's another office that's across town it's like a 35 minute drive and I had to be there at 7 15 so I couldn't take my kids to school that morning I got them ready and I and I did tell them um, what I was having done um, I told Brooke both but I only told Will eyelids because I didn't want to cook him out too much with boob top and um, so um, my mom took me to surgery because John took the kids to school I felt like that would be a better thing to do and then they said my mom didn't have to stay so what my mom did is um, the doctor said I might need some lubricating eye drops and I think this is one of my questions a lot of times what happens is when people get the surgery your eyes get swollen and when you go to sleep some people their eyes won't close all the way and their eyes dry out real bad so he um, asked my mom to pick up some lubricating eye drops and then um, she was picking me up some stuff like sweet tea and um, she picked me up all kinds of stuff to eat that week and stuff for the kids I mean even like um, charm pops and just you know stuff like that sweet things that moms do and but the bad thing is John ended up coming over, you know, later around, you know, my surgery took for both things. Um, I think it took, it was supposed to take two and a half hours. And so I'm sure it probably did. And they do the eyes first, then they do the lift. And um, so, gosh, there's so many details. That's why I know it's going to take more than one video. But, um, so where was I? I woke up nauseous. Um, and I woke up with the pads on my face and then I came home and some doctors do stitches in your eyes that dissolve. Um, he said he did not like to do those kind because they can leave little white marks on your eyelids, kind of like milia, those little white marks where the stitches are. So I was very thankful that he do, didn't do that. So um, what I didn't realize is for some reason I was thinking stitches like, you know, stitches like that. So when I did finally look at my eyes, I felt like I didn't, I couldn't see the stitches. So in my head, I was thinking, oh my gosh, there, I felt like my skin was closing over the stitches and I felt like something was wrong. So of course they give you a number that you can call with any concerns. And I called and she says, no, no, you're fine. She said, the stitches are in there. You just probably can't see them. And John said, yeah. Um, that's what this is and it was funny I had a piece of tape here and I had two pieces of tape here and what what they do is they stitch through it with one stitch and it comes out here and it comes out here and so there, it's taped and then the other stitch kind of goes through there and it's done like that and um, so that is that. Is that what I'm worried about? Did I see an instant difference? So what I was going with is they send you home with these pads, nonstick pads, and this water that is, you know, sterile water in this little tray. And what John and my mom would do is you keep that water cold, you wet the pad, you put the nonstick pad on your eyes, then you put this gauze-like headband on and then you put the they give you an ice pack that's kind of like that and what that does is you know a lot of times like if you try to put um i have a funny story about the peas i had gotten peas because people told me to get that um if you put peas or something on there it gets so cold you have to take it off and they had told me you need to leave it on for i think 20 or 30 minutes on and 20 or 30 minutes off but what that you know the pads and then that gauze thing does is allow you to keep that cold press cold pack on for that amount of time and so my mom 
you know, was doing that for a while. And then John did that for me. And we did that for, I think, two days. And my swelling just really wasn't that bad. At first it was that first day, but it went down. And one thing I can say is my mom, you know, was here with me that Wednesday. Um, Thursday, um, she offered to come over. She keeps my baby niece, my brother's little girl. And she offered to come over um, while she was at, she takes her to preschool and then goes and picks her up and keeps her the rest of the day. And she offered to come up here and, I, and John was off work and I, I really didn't feel like I needed, I didn't want to you know, put her out anymore. And um, I really didn't even, I think she stopped by like one more time to bring some tea or something like that. And because John is not, he is not uh, maternal and he is not a caregiver. He is very, um, the typical man, he is very, here's a problem, here's gonna how, how I'm going to fix it, the quickest, most efficient way, no fluff, no details, doesn't really want to hear anybody else's opinion. Um, if he doesn't agree with it, he thinks it's the wrong way, you know, he's just that type, which I grew up with that type, so it doesn't bother me, I'm used to it. And um, so he was, he was really good. He was having a hard time, you know, he had to take the kids to school, which he never does. He had to get them ready, which he never does. And um, that was kind of tough on me. That was one of the toughest things is hearing them get ready. And I don't know, it just, I'm real funny about in the mornings, I want my children's morning to be so pleasant because I want to set them off for a good day at school. I don't fuss at them in the mornings. I don't, um, I kind of really, I baby them too much in the mornings. And he was kind of like, let's get out of here, let's go. And I had to write everything down for him. So it kind of bothered me, you know, that I couldn't get up and do that. But he got it done and they understood. So, um, so anyway, that's the cold press. And what I was going to tell you about the peas that is so funny is I put the, I got peas and I put them in a Ziploc bag so that they would have plenty of room to kind of move around and spread out on my eyes. And you know I had all cats and Bridget laying with me the whole time, which I loved it. But Bridget was trying to eat my peas. <laughs> she would not leave my peas alone. So anyway, the ice pack that they gave me was much better. Um, one of my subscribers and a girl on here, Ginger, Miss Ginger's beauty channel, she asked me about Plexer, P-L-E-X-R. And... Um, I had never seen that, but if you will look it up, it's another method that they use that tightens that skin with, I don't know if it's, it's really interesting to watch the video. I will, um, if I can find the video, I'll put it down below, but I had never heard of that, and so I had never considered it. And she said, when can you um, conceal enough to leave the house? Okay. Your eyelids, okay, I had this done on Wednesday. I had a post, my first post-op appointment was Monday and I had my stitches taken out. Can you believe that they, my eyelids healed that quick? And she said that eyelids were so, there's so much of a blood supply that they heal so fast. She said they would almost heal without the stitches. And so it did not feel good, it burnt. What they do is kind of um, snip them, or they snip, I don't know if they snipped in here. She did some kind of snipping, and then she pulled it, and she said it might burn, and it did. And she pulled it right out, and everything was fine. And um, I had, you'll see in some pictures, I had some, this side was much worse than that, some bruising right here, and then I had a little bit of bruising right there, and then I just had that red mark um, in the crease, but my actual, it didn't look like I had black eye, a black eye or anything. It wasn't swollen. It wasn't as bad as you would think it would be. So, I know that's going to be a lot of your questions. You can conceal that bruise, probably. I never tried to because I, I'm not ashamed of having it, but I understand, you know, it's easier for me to tell you guys because this is what we're talking about. That's why I'm here is to tell you about things like this. But I do understand that if you're going to work or you're around people that might be real judgmental or you just don't want to blast at everybody, I understand that you don't want to tell everybody. And, um, and that's what my mom told me about, you know, telling you guys. My mom was like, you know, you don't have to tell everybody everything. And I understand that, but I hope that you understand that I'm doing it because... I want to be able to share it with you. And um, so anyway, 
when can you leave the house? I left the house that Monday. And, um, you know, I just wear your big sunglasses. And um, the thing is you can't wear makeup on your eyelids for about two weeks. So that's all you have to consider. And um, you won't want to wear, you can't wear mascara or anything. And they say the reason is because what you would have to use to take it off is not good. You can't, you don't want to get anything in that wound, you know, but while it's healing. So I would say this two is weeks. something I wrote down, numbness before. on lids. When you first get it done, and even right now, my eyelids are not totally back to normal. Up here is back to normal, but on my eye, actual eyelid, they'll be real numb at first. And it just takes a while for the nerves and everything to get back to normal. That is very normal. And um, it, I've noticed that it kind of starts from the incision site and is coming down. At first, I could not even feel my eyelids at all. And so that's something to expect. Um, did stitches come out or have to be taken out? Mine had to be taken out, but you know, some doctors do the kind that dissolve. And that's the kind I have down here. Okay, um, well, you have to have it redone. This is something that I had asked a lot. My doctor said no. He did not expect me to have it redone. But I have a friend, Lori, that said she had had it done and she needs it redone. So I guess it just depends on... That's just something you don't know. I guess it just depends on, you know, your skin, um, how it, I guess, th the outcome the first time, gravity, you know, all that kind of stuff. But if I do, I'll do it again. It was just not a tough surgery at all. And um, he said he had done his brother's eyes like 11 years ago and they were still great. So I don't expect to have it done again. And I think by the time I would... I don't know. I'd, I'd have it done again if I needed um, to. One eye is still bigger than the other, a different shape. I've kind of gone into that. That's just the way it is. And I can tell you without a doubt, I wrote this down and I was going to skip it, but I had, you know, some kind of meanie say, why didn't I have my nose done? And I realized I have a big nose, but I love my nose. It's my family's nose. It's my German heritage nose. I feel like it's like my grandmother's family. And that just doesn't bother me. I like the fact that I look different. And, um, you know, all my life I've been told that I had a different look, and I like that. And, um, but what I can tell you after having this done is don't think that after you have this done that you're going to look like you did when you were younger. Because I really don't. Because when I was younger, I had those hooded eyes. So... It's not that I feel like I look that different now, but I just, I don't want you to think you're gonna look like you did when you were in your 20s because it's just different. And it is different. And this is something else I wanted to tell you. He ended up telling me at my post-op appointment that when he got in here um, of my eyelids, and you guys can remember how this used to be kind of, it hung over and I used to always have to put dark shadow in there. He said that he actually ran into some fat in there and had to, he said he could, this is gross, but he said he just, you could kind of squeeze it and it just came right out. And um, so now you can see, and I'm close up, but you can see how I don't have any fat in there now. It's just really tight and easy to work with. And um, so I think what had started happening is I probably just started losing it out here and it was kind of working its way in. And um, so I think when you have fat up there that you need to remove, it makes it more of a complicated surgery. You might have more stitches. I think it costs more. And I think, you know, all of those things contribute to your um, time healing and this, you know, how that goes. So, um, anyway, so what I was thinking is when I came home and I, I noticed things way more than anybody else does, of course, it made me so thankful that I didn't have anything done like my nose or like anything else that would change my looks. Even if other people might think I would look better with a different nose or different this or that, it, I think the feeling of looking different and I could start crying because I'm at a kind of an emotional phase right now anyway with my um, mastoplexy because I had my um, tapes taken off and 
you've heard people say that after you have that done, it looks like you have Franken boobs, and it does. And it's um, it's emotional, <laughs> and it makes you miss or wonder was what I had that bad, and should I have done this? And that's very very much a part of any surgeries that you have. And it just made me thank God I didn't do anything too drastic, because it will it would have freaked me um, out so bad. Um, and how did they know how much to reduce? Oh, this is such a good question. They know exactly how much. They use this little tool and they go, they have you open your eye real slow and they mark the first fold of your eyelid and then they mark, use the thing to mark the other and then they know exactly how much to take out. And um, they show you that on the pre-op appointment and then when you get there that day, my mom was there when they actually used the marker and marked my eyelids. And so my mom got to see and she was there when they marked my boobs and I'll get into how there's a special formula for that too. And so uh, Miss Crystal asked me, was I afraid that I would get that Kenny Rogers look or something like some people get it done and their eyes are just too open and it makes your eyes, eyeballs look real big. I wasn't afraid of that because he mentioned that he wanted to make it a soft look and he wanted to make it where not too much of my eye, um, the orbital, or he said he used a term, and so I felt real good about that. And I've even heard nightmare stories where people can't close their eyes, and I never, matter of fact, the two sets of drops that my mom got, she got a regular lubricating drop, and then she got a kind of a lubricating ointment. Um, I didn't even open them. I sent them home with her because my dad's got dry eyes, so I never even, it didn't even bother me. And another thing I wanted to tell you is they will tell you to maybe get an eye mask I meant to bring mine up to show you because it's hilarious. So I um, sent John to the store. He went to the store and I asked him to get me an eye mask. And he came back with one from the, which I mean, this is his, he didn't get me a pretty little satin one or something out of the like makeup or um, bath and body department. He got me a black one from the medical department. It was like black and plastic and kind of, um, kind of stiff. It kind of went like that. It had a black band around it, which <laughs> it was no big deal. But um, they tell you, you might want to use that to sleep at night. And so I did the first night because my biggest nightmare was not forgetting in my sleep and maybe reaching up and scratching my eye or something. But it backfired on me because when I was trying to take a nap the next day, it bugged me kind of all night. And another thing is, you have for the first, I think, week, and I did it longer, you have to sleep sitting up. You have you have to put your pillows, you know, get your pillows ready before you leave, and um, you have to sleep sitting up. Your head has to be, you know, right much higher than your heart. I kind of slept really sitting up. So sleeping is just not good. It's still not that good for me, but it's going to be worth it in the end. And what happened is I was trying to take a nap, and John walked in the room and our door makes a little bit of a, you know, like a when it comes, when you open the door and it startled me. And your first instinct is to get that blindfold thing off. And I opened up this eye and it was just like, pew, just like pouring blood. Freaked us both out, but it healed right back up and everything was fine. Okay, I feel like I should probably stop. It's going to take a lot to edit this video and get my pictures and stuff in there. And I will continue part two um, probably next week or just next time I get a chance. And um, I'll do a quick outfit of the day. Is, the brand is Lathe and it is from Nordstrom and they still sell them. Matter of fact, I just ordered two more dresses that I got yesterday from this same brand that I'll show you on Friday. And um, this one's a small. The other ones I ordered are mediums, which will probably fit a little bit better. But it's so pretty out today. I wanted to wear a dress. And then um, my shoes are Jimmy Choo pumps, the open toe pumps. And my bag is this one. I love it. And as you can see, it just goes with everything. And um, it's the mink off bag. And for accessories, I have on um, some Dean David, some earrings, just the little kind of like the mother of pearl studs. Um, I have on my U necklace that I never take off. And then I have on this, I wanted something just kind of different. And so I have my Sheila Fajal leaf necklace. And I like, this one just has a good, it hangs nicely. And um, just, 
I, don't, I like it. Good little sparkle. And my hair is crazy today because I put that mousse that I was telling you guys about in it. And I put it I will see you guys on Friday. And we will continue this video also next week. See you then. Bye-bye.